Hi, my name is Ali Shesova and in this short video we're going to discuss how we go about designing a differential mode EMC filter. So in order to design a uh, EMC filter there are different strategies. The one that we're going to use is by using a fantastic tool which is called a reactance paper or an impedance paper. Before we show you the impedance paper let us just look at the basics for one second. Imagine you've got a capacitor and that's going to be your filter capacitor. We know that the impedance of the capacitor is going to fall at a rate of 2 pi Fc. Yeah. For simplicity, let's say I have a 10 nanofarad capacitor. This is the frequency axis. This is the impedance axis. And I know that if I plot them, plot the impedance of the capacitor as the frequency increases, it is going to fall like so. Yeah. We also know that in our filter, we're going to have an inductor. And we know that the impedance of the inductor is 2 pi FL. For simplicity, let us say that we now have a 10 microhenry inductor. 10 microhenry. And if I plot the impedance of the inductor, as a function of frequency, it will go up like so. And at some point these two will cross. Yeah? And I can, at any frequency I can read the impedance at, on, this, on this axis. I can plot one which is 100 microhenries. Yeah? And I can one, plot one which is 100 nanofarads or maybe 1 nanofarad and so on. And if I do so I will end up with a set of curves for the capacitors <coughs> and set of lines that are better word than curves for various values of inductors. And if I do them, let's say on a logarithmic scale for a whole bunch of inductors and a whole bunch of capacitors, I end up with a plot which is called the reactance paper. The beauty of this paper is that it very, very simply allows me to look at the paper and determine few things. One of them that I can very easily determine is the cutoff frequency of the filter, which is 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC. The other thing that I can calculate look at and work out very quickly is the total impedance z out of the filter which we know we need for Middlebrook which is the square root of L over C. Not only that, at some point we're going to discuss damping. I can easily work out Q which is 1 over R the square root of LC where R is the damping resistor. So when I plot all of these on top of each other it looks a little bit like, well, exactly like this. Now, I know it looks a little bit intimidating to start with, but please, please, please don't be scared of this paper. What we have got here is a series of capacitors and how the impedances fall with frequencies and a series of inductances and how the impedances rise with frequency. Now, let's say that from our specification, we know that the cutoff frequency of our differential mode filter is going to be 7 kilohertz. We have calculated the, the biggest uh, harmonic content that we, that we have to attenuate to a certain level. Therefore, we, let's say for now that we have determined that the cutoff frequency needs to be 7 kilohertz. So I look at my frequency axis, then I find 7 kilohertz. That's 10, 9, 8. 7, right here, and I draw the line for my AMC filter, the cutoff frequency. There we go. Now, from our previous videos, we know that uh, Middlebrook's stability criteria states that the output impedance of the filter has to be much smaller than the input impedance of the filter. Uh, let us 
assume that we're going to force the output impedance, I beg your pardon, uh, the output impedance of the filter has to be much more than the input impedance of the power supply. So let us assume that Z out of the filter has to be one tenth of Z in of the power supply. And if I assume that Z in is equal to 20 ohms, then Z out in order to not violate Middlebrook has to be smaller than 2 ohms. The equations of these, by the way, are, are very simple and they're in a different video that we have already recorded. Now, if I look at this, I will see the impedances. And I know that the impedance of the filter, which is going to be the square root of L over C, which is being displayed on by this graph, has to be smaller than 2 ohms. So, I find the 2 ohm line. And I'll draw the line. Okay, great. Now, looking at the cutoff frequency line, and knowing that this paper is allowing me to select the values of my inductors and my capacitors for my filter, you can see that I can have a massive range of capacitors and inductors that gives me a cutoff frequency of 7 kilohertz. It is determined by the 1 over 2 pi a square root of LC uh, equation. But clearly we cannot pick 2 giga henrys and 1 femtofarad in order to get 7 kilohertz by way of example. I need to narrow down this field knowing that the maximum impedance that I can have on the filter cannot be higher than 2 ohms and I've drawn the 2 ohms line, this is because of Middlebrook, I can immediately cross out all of this range. So I know that I cannot use any values above this line of impedances, of, of inductances and capacitances, right, that violates this Middlebrook criteria. So let us see what is the value of the capacitor inductance that I can use. So if I now draw a line at this point, that is the impedance of the capacitor falling and hitting the 7 kilohertz axis. So that is 7 kilohertz, which is my cutoff frequency. Now here, I can see that minimum capacitance, let's call this C min, is around 10 microfarads. That's the minimum value. Yeah? Anything lower than that violates the Middlebrook criteria. Now, when I have determined that the minimum value is 10 microfarads, I know from 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC what is the maximum value of inductance. But I don't have to calculate it because it happens to be, I can, on the impedance paper, I can read it directly. So if I draw a line now where the capacitance hits the 7 kilohertz cutoff, of, cutoff frequency, and I draw it down here, then I can read the value of the inductance straight off the graph, which is somewhere around 20. 30, 40, 50 microhenries. And that is the maximum value that I can use. So I have now got the minimum value of the capacitor and the maximum value of the capacitor that will give me a filter with a cutoff frequency of around 7 kilohertz. Okay? Now, we have other criteria. For example, let us assume for simplicity that I cannot buy a uh, um, inductor that is uh, more than a certain value or I cannot buy a capacitor that is bigger than a certain amount for size purposes or DC bias purposes and so on. So for let us assume that the maximum amount of capacitance I can use is 100 microfarads because anything larger than that will have massive DC bias or will, will be, violate the spare, space requirement. So I will then draw a line from 100 microfarads that 
down here. So then again, immediately that determines my maximum value of capacitance. So C max is 100 microfarads. And then when that hits the 7 kilohertz cutoff, I can draw a line. And that determines the minimum value of inductance. So L min is equal to whatever it is that you read off the graph. The important part is that as you draw this line, everything above this line is now violating some requirement. And everything on this side is violating some requirement. So what you end up with finally is a very small range of capacitors and inductors which we know. You know minimum value of capacitance, you know maximum value of capacitance, you know minimum value of inductance, you know maximum value of inductance. So then you can very easily determine the, 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 a, a reasonable range, probably in the middle somewhere, whereby it gives you a nice cutoff frequency, it gives you a set of components that does not va violate the Middlebrook stability criteria and it also makes sure that the size of the capacitor inductor is not too big or too small depending on whatever range you crossed out. So this is an example of, uh, of, of how we design a filter with an impedance paper which is an extremely useful tool and we have put one on our website and you can download it for free uh, from the link below.